Taking the Stairs? Taking the Stairs by John Stiles. 41 years old. Still. Still going. Okay. Taking the Stairs by John Stiles. Um, I have chosen this passage in the book um, on page 69 because it intersects the story after uh, the narrator is back in Toronto. The beginning of the novel starts with uh, Jared trying to um, finish his first novel and it's about Lana Banana. Um, so the reason I've chosen this part is because it intersects the Toronto stuff. And the Toronto stuff um, is Jared, who's a 32-year-old, basically uh, frustrated uh, writer who's been living on the fringes of society for many, many years, who's just been writing all the time and losing touch with life and people. So now that I'm 42 um, and living in England and married um, I am comp I'm going to read it to you 69 page 69 taking the stairs the trauma bit after the Nova Scotia Naples Valley stuff land of banana I work all night in my crummy room on Shaw Street, waiting, writing the press release for the animation company. When I'm done, I spot an envelope with a dated short story in it, and I lie in my little futon and lick stamps on envelopes to journals that have not yet had the privilege of seeing my work. The next morning, I get picked up at 6 a.m. by Sinclair. In his white jimmy, and he asks if I'm going to air mail or surface mail as he peels a book of stamps from my shirt. He then tells me politely that I should brush my teeth and I feel like hell knowing it's been two or three days at least. Chapter 9. When I'm back home, I, sleep at, I fall asleep on the spot with a chocolate bar in my mouth, which melts into the pillow. Phone rings again. Is this Jared Palmer? Maybe. Jared Palmer, this is Visa calling. How are you today? I'm not paying you back, I scream, just as Adrian Ease arrives at my door. She's wearing corduroy pants, the same corduroy pants I don't like much, and she's delicately peeling a banana. She comes up, puts the fruit in the bowl beside the fridge, washes down the counter, takes me down the hall with her to my bedroom. She lies beside me, and I can barely keep my eyes open. I cannot sleep. Go to sleep with me, Adrian Ease. I cannot sleep. Hold my hand and close your eyes. I begin to nod off, but I open my eyes. There are two large black marbles blinking. I cannot sleep. I get up with Adrian Ease, pour the girl a glass of water, and go back to my bed, with her taking up most of the room and the foot on. The next morning, Adrian Ease is grunting so loud in her dreams, the entire world might as well know about it. I don't mind at all, because the girl is stoked up, fiery red like an oven in my bed. But I cannot sleep, and so I run to the kitchen and the bathroom and piss. I then sit on the table in the kitchen and chew on a piece of orange. When the girl that boards down the hall walks into the bathroom, I smile at her, and she glares at me. I realize too late that I am eating her bag of oranges, and I don't actually have any oranges. I go back to my room, but Adrienne is still grunting and groaning in her sleep like there's no tomorrow.